the monstrous Audi Q7 meets Mercedes noble giant the GL, the S-Class of SUVs, we compare the 224 diesel horsepower GL320 CDI and the 233 horsepower Q7 30 TDI. The Audi, with its 2.3-ton driving weight, can reach 100 in 9.1 seconds. Top speed is 216 kilometers per hour, and consumption is certainly higher than the stated 10.5 liters. The GL is 200 kilos heavier, yet consumes a half liter less than the Q7. Acceleration and output are almost equal. The 65,000 euro price tag is the only difference. The Audi is 15,000 euros cheaper. Welcome to the world of XXL cars. They don't come bigger than this. At 5.9 meters long and just under 2 meters wide, Audi's battleship moves through traffic like an icebreaker. With the Q7, Audi is forging into a new dimension, but without forgetting the typical brand style. A huge single-frame grille dominates the front, flanked by baleful xenon lights. With a front that looks perfect for the fast lane and coupe-like traits at the back, the Q7 radiates a lurking aggressiveness, even stationary. The GL, on the other hand, is majestic with a meaty off-road look, angles and edges. The relationship to the robust G-Class is unmistakable. Reminiscent of an impregnable castle, the Mercedes is 10 centimeters higher than the Audi, but 6 centimeters narrower. The style is notably more rustic, not as smoothed out as the Audi. The GL's cute little wing mirrors, however, would look better on a tiny city runabout. With adaptive air suspension for 2,575 euros, the Q7 can pump the ground clearance up through four levels, from 18 to a maximum 24 centimeters. An overhang of one meter at the front allows it to tackle inclines of up to 25 degrees. Included as standard is the successful Quattro technology. A self-locking middle differential can, as needed, shunt up to 65% of the power to the front wheels or up to 85 to the back wheels. An electronic differential lock regulates any loss of traction on individual wheels through braking support. The Q7 acquits itself quite well over hill and dale, but owing to the lack of activable differential locks, rough terrain should be avoided. But this is where the GL feels at home. No slope is too steep, no puddle too deep. The height control can raise it to an incredible 30.7 centimeters, a large point in its favor. The front overhang is 10 centimeters less than on the Q7, allowing it to tackle inclines of up to 33 degrees, but scratches to the undercoat are possible with a wheelbase of three meters. The best off-road technology, all as standard. Mercedes has given the GL off-road gear reduction and an up to 100% lockable middle and rear differential. On top of that, there's traction control. The wheels brake automatically when they lose grip on the road. This allows the Colossus to tackle up to one-in-one in one inclines. Crazy. The GL is as happy as Larry in the dirt and off tarmac roads. The G on the boot lid is well deserved. The award for clambering abilities goes without doubt to the Mercedes GL. Space and luxury. The GL has more than enough of both. The boot can hold up to 2,300 liters of luggage, up to a weight of 775 kilos. An optional third row of seats is available for 1,563 euros, which will please the target group of American buyers.
The interior looks like a refined ML. Gears are changed by levers on the steering wheel. In front of the driver is an endless expanse of leather, top quality materials and perfect workmanship. The well-heeled GL owner should want for nothing, but that has its price. Our test car had extras amounting to 15,000 euros. Air conditioning and very comfortable electronically adjustable seats come as standard. The Q7 is significantly sportier and cooler. Available space in the back is around the same as the GL. There is a maximum luggage capacity of 2,035 litres in the Audi, 265 less than the GL. An optional third row of seats is also available for 720 euros. Like the cockpit of an orbital glider, the mix of top quality Alcantara and aluminium materials has a very modern feel. Air conditioning, CD radio and the obligatory parking sensors come as standard. The finish is exceptional, but so is Audi's extras policy. The wonderful sport seats in leather easily come to 5,600 euros. The GL, the fortress on wheels, weighs half a ton more than the S-Class. Is it also as comfortable? Yes. The luxury SUV simply glides over things in terms of sound insulation, Mercedes packed extra soundproof material under the bonnet, a soft purr is all the driver will hear, and then only during vigorous kickdowns. As expected, the chassis calibration is adjusted for comfort with no compromises. Bumps and potholes are swallowed up by the suspension and shock absorbers. The steering could have more precision and feedback. Tight corners and load changes cause wild rocking and understeer. Noticeably better in terms of agility and driving dynamics is the Q7. Its air suspension regulates roll and ensures an automatic lowering rate of up to 30 millimeters at high speeds. The Lord of the Rings is noticeably more aggressive to drive. The engine accepts kickdowns with a dull rumble and pushes the Audi from 0 to 100 in 9.1 seconds, a good second livelier than the GL. Less pleasing is the consumption of 15 litres and CO2 emissions of over 280 grams per kilometre. Positive points are nicely direct steering and the highly responsive six-speed automatic transmission. On tarmac, the more agile Q7 leaves the GL in the dust. So who has the best package, Audi's Q7 or Mercedes GL? The Mercedes scores points with ample space, a high level of comfort and good off-road capabilities, but the price of 65,000 euros is alarming. The Q7 is 15,000 euros cheaper, offers a powerful engine and a taut chassis for this class, but the visibility in city traffic is catastrophic as are the high emissions. Neither is politically correct. In the end, the Q7 narrowly beats the GL. The Mercedes excels as a comfortable luxury off-roader, but the deciding factor is the on-road performance, and here the sportier Q7 clearly has the edge.